Hey, 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 we've got another amazing episode today because I have Deborah Poneman in the house and she is a rock star. Before I tell you about her, hey, Deborah, so good to have you here. So happy to be here. I've been having so much fun with you and we haven't even started yet. I know the pre party, the pre party. <laughs> well, such information is about to blow your mind, sister. So here we go. Let me tell you about Deborah. As a founder and CEO of Yes to Success Inc., Deborah's workshops, keynotes, and online events have provided a step by step system to create both profound and inner and outer success. We're going to be talking about a lot of the inner and the outer success and what that means in a moment. Deborah is also recognized as a leading authority on turning back the hands of time. Bum, bum, bum. In her acclaimed course, aptly called Ageless, she shares that although chronicle aging is inevitable, physical aging does not have to occur in the way we've been led to believe. Deborah's anti-aging tools, yes, that's why I brought her here, have brought deep, blissful sleep, ah, a clear mind, unlimited energy, and a physical strength and radiance to tens of thousands around the world. And she's also a best-selling author, has a ton of wisdom. I am so friggin' thrilled to have this opportunity to be with you, Deborah. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Well, thank you. I can't wait to see what I say. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> this is the, the beauty of being in real time. Even though it's recorded, it's like, this is real. This is real. We are being real. And who knows what's going to come out of our mouth. So let's start with the fact that for almost four decades, you traveled the world and taught people how to create lives of true success. And then recently, you began to teach how to slow and reverse the aging process. We're all like chomping at the bit about the aging reversing process. However, can you give us a little bit of insight around this successful part? You know, how we had this yes to success part. And then what had you switch? Well, here's the thing. I didn't really just decide to start teaching anti-aging. It kind of decided me and I and I just went with the flow. I, I was happily teaching my yes to success seminar since 1980. And as you said, sharing knowledge and tools to live success. And I've also been a meditation teacher since 1972. So I also have been teaching people how to create a foundation of silence on the inside. So no matter what happens on the outside, you remain un unshakable. And <clears throat> in fact, in a few days, it's going to be my 51st anniversary of being a meditation teacher. Yay for me. So Yay for you, that's that's phenomenal. Seriously, because so many people start meditation in and out, in and out. Can I do it? Blah, 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 blah. Yes. Wow. And wow, wow. 51 years of teaching, 53 years of meditating. But when I would be teaching my classes, whether it's meditation or success, whenever I would mention my age, which I told you I'm 71, people would be like, what? Yeah, yeah, like my reaction. <laughs> And if you only saw really, my reaction, if for the people that are listening to the audio, it's like literally my jaw dropped and, you know, you definitely come over to the YouTube station and check this lady out like, OMG. Yeah. And this is really me. I mean, I have no problem with anybody doing any kind of work because I think that if you look in the mirror and you love what you th see, it makes you happy and yeah. it lifts up your vibration. But, but, um, so people, I would get inundated with like emails saying, how do you virtually have no wrinkles, you know, no gray hair? That's hereditary, by the way. So no, but, you know, and how do I speak from stage, from the stage for hours with no notes? So instead of continuing to spend my life answering those emails, I had the idea, why don't I put together a course that contains all of my secrets? So I contacted my dear friend, Ronnie Newman, who I knew from college. We went to Wash U together in the early 70s. She went on to become a mind-body researcher at Harvard, and she specialized in slowing and reversing the aging of the brain and the body. In fact, she was part of the team in the 1980s and 90s who did the research at Harvard that appeared on the cover of Newsweek. It was about how meditation reverses the aging process. You might mm -hmm. remember it. So I called her. I said, Ronnie, why don't you and I put together a course on how to slow and reverse the aging process? 
I know how to teach courses. You know all of the science and we can teach people how to have great health and glowing oh. skin, and a clear mind, strong libido. And um, <laughs> we did it. Now we've taught our course to thousands of people around the world. So that's my story. Wow. 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 And, you know, one of the questions I asked you earlier, and I'm sure you'll tie it to some of the things that you share with us today is, okay, we know that you've been meditating all these years and some of the lifestyle changes you're going to share with us. um, We might be going, oh yes, let's implement that now. And yet some of us, like I'm almost 60, there are going to be women in their sixties and seventies listening going, well, oh, if I only knew this sooner, is it too late for people to shift and change their ways to actually feel better and even maybe reverse aging? Absolutely, a thousand percent. And that's why we don't teach our course to say, sorry, you missed the boat, girls, you know. <laughs> it, first of all, one of the things that people worry about is uh, mental acuity, right? And it is possible to generate new brain neurons into your 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, hundreds. Yeah. But it's also, it's possible to strengthen the collagen in your skin. It's not once it's gone, it's not strengthenable. It is strengthenable. <laughs> I made up that word. So all <laughs> these, fresh off the press. <laughs> people now are ways to, you know, just shift it up. You know, if you look in the mirror and think, ain't no, you know, there is no change in this thing. There is. So I would love to tell you how. Absolutely. Because, you know, the women that are listening to this podcast, most of them are single. And whether they want a partner or not, we're all looking in the mirror. We're all wanting to have extraordinary second half of lives to, to just feel better about ourselves. So I'm I'm excited because you're going to give us lots of lifestyle tips and how to actually change and feel vibrant and all the things you just said. I'm wondering, before we go there into the lifestyle changes, can you share a little bit about brain and body age? Like, what's that about? Yeah, yeah. And, and actually, it ties into the last question. Obviously, some aging is inevitable. You can't avoid wear and tear on your joints unless you don't move, right? We produce less HGH, human growth hormone, as we age, which I'm going to talk about how to produce more in a minute. We also produce less, less natural collagen as we age, which is the most important protein found in the body. And especially under stress and anxiety, collagen strands do unravel. Mm. And that leads to a loss of collagen elasticity or what's known as a loss of functional integrity, which means you get wrinkles. Okay. Functional integrity. So, but the interesting thing about collagen is that stimulating its growth causes a domino effect. The more collagen you have, the more your body is able to produce and maintain collagen. But the thing about aging is that most deterioration, and here's the deal, is due to lifestyle choices. So, you know, I'm going to give you a graphic example. What happens to an apple when you cut it in half and leave it on the counter? It turns brown. (laughs) And you know, that's oxidation. If you don't want it to turn brown, you can squirt some lemon juice on it, which is an antioxidant. Similarly, you you can oxidize your skin by going, going out in the sun, knock yourself out. But when you get tan, that's like the apple turning brown. And, and, and it destroys, it, it, it's an, it oxidizes your skin. Smoking oxidizes your skin. Over-exercising causes oxidation to the body. Certain foods speed up oxidation. So what you want to do is to avoid things like the sun, like the plague, smoking. You want to eat foods that are antioxidants like squirting lemon on the apple. You want to eat broccoli. You want to eat spinach. You want to eat blueberries. You want to eat dark cherries and strawberries and kale and drink green tea. So again, much of the way we age is preventable. And that's why I want to share these lifestyle choices because as big pharma is racing for the cure for, you know, memory loss and physical decline and dementia, Alzheimer's, there are proven lifestyle changes that can slow down and reverse decline naturally without pharmaceuticals with all of the potential negative side effects. And it is true the earlier you implement these lifestyle changes, the better, but there's no time like the present. 
Because All right, we're, all- we're in the present. Let's let's go for the first lifestyle change. Let's just dive right in. Okay, so um, my partner Ronnie's original research at Harvard was about getting your stress under stress in check. Would you like to know how stress affects the brain? Let's talk about the brain for a second. Let me, hold on, let me just take a breath. And I just I just did this big event. Talk about like trying to balance my stress. Please let me know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we all we so all. You remember yeah. from high school biology class that our brain cells called neurons. Remember, they have these finger like protrusions, and the long ones are the axons, and the short ones are the dendrites. And the ways that the way that cells communicate is that electrical charges travel along the axon and are picked up by the dendrite. And there's this little space between them. And a chemical called a neurotransmitter is discharged from one neuron to the other, okay? And this is called the synapse and that's how brain cells communicate, okay? So what happens is, is that one signal travels from one brain cell to the other brain cell to the next brain cell. But when stress is triggered, a hormone called CRH, corticotrophin releasing hormone, CRH. See, when you have a clear brain, you can remember things like corticotrophin releasing hormone. CRH. (laughs) CRH. So CRH is released into multiple areas of the brain and the CRH causes these axons and dendritic spines to literally retract and even decompose. Mm. So the space between our brain cells becomes so large that our cells can no longer communicate effectively with with each other. Yeah. When your communicators are this far apart, you can't remember what you learned five minutes ago. Like you go to the crowded mall parking lot and it's like, where did I park my car? Yeah right? Or did I already tell Jane that my son is getting married? Or what was her husband's name? Oh gosh, I, I knew it. Yeah. And it's also the basis for performance anxiety, test anxiety. You pe- prepared for a you know a review at work. You're going to say all these brilliant things. But then when you get in for the review, the corticotrophin releasing hormone releases and the dendritic spines retract and you cannot remember what the heck you were, I was going to say hell. I could say hell here. What the hell you're going to say. <laughs> and by the way, one other thing I want to say is one of the areas of the brain that's most effective is our prefrontal cortex. And mm-hmm. that's responsible for planning and memory and time management and self-control so it helps you now to outburst at the wrong time and it also helps you stay on your diet but unfortunately as cells die the prefrontal cortex thins with age which results in impaired memory and cognitive decline so how do we protect our brain from the ravages of stress well most of you have heard that meditation is a potent stress management technique you'd have to be living under a rock for the last several decades, not <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But meditation actually does much more than just manage stress. It actually helps you grow a bigger brain, and it thickens the areas nor- that normally thin with age. There was a study that was published in PubMed uh, by a woman named Lazar, and she said that the average cortical thickness of forty to fir- forty to fifty year old meditators was equal to that of twenty to thirty year old non-meditators. Wow. That's huge. Wow. What a testament to just this one tool. So meditation, I mean, we mentioned that I have been a a transcendental meditation teacher. Oh, that's what you do? The TM? Is that that what I taught TM? I actually teach through a different organization now that that comes from the same tradition. I I still teach meditation because I think it is the basis to success. It is the basis to anti-aging. If you just do one thing, this is it. But it has to be a technique that has been scientifically proven. And so TM, of course, has, and I teach through the Art of Living Foundation um, called Sahaj Samadhi Meditation. And again, it comes from the same tradition. But, and as a side benefit, just by the way, meditation also specifically increases the area of the brain responsible for experiencing happiness. 
and mm-hmm. positive emotions. But I got another one for you. So meditation, I teach through the art of living. Um, I think that TM and, and the art of living meditation have been so thoroughly researched that, you know, and all of the, the brain research around those two techniques. But another one of the quickest and most effective foolproof methods to get stress under control is right under your nose. And that is your breath. So to show the power of the breath to conquer stress, I want to teach everybody a breath technique. Woo! Absolutely. Yay. Yeah. I mean, there is a study done at the University of Ottawa by um, a doctor named Augural, and, and um, you probably know that the stress hormone, the least popular hormone, was significantly, um, uh, cortisol was significantly decreased by this little technique that I'm going to tell you. Okay. All right. Right. That's, why, do it. that's why everyone pays the big bucks to listen to the podcast. Ha ha ha. But anyway. <laughs> Right. I I know they have to pay extra for this one. (laughs) This is so this is how you do it. It's called straw breath. Shatali meditation, Shatali breath, which is in Sanskrit, but you don't have to remember that straw breath. And it's my favorite because you could do it anywhere, anytime. And all you do is we could do it together. Breathe in through the nose. Deep breath, fill your lungs. And then when you breathe out, purse your lips like you're blowing through a straw. Empty your lungs, breathe in through your nose. Breathe out slowly through the pursed lips like you're blowing through a little straw. For extra credit, let's do the next one with our eyes closed and through the nose. Out through the pursed lips. One more time in through the nose. And slowly out through your pursed lips. Mm. four breaths and how do you feel I already feel amazing <laughs> like it's like a total shift you know it's amazing isn't so that crazy simple, so profound right right and and you know why I love it you know when you're on let's say you're on a board meeting or something and you have like 10 people on a zoom call or six people and you're really not liking what's going on and you're getting really just do your straw breaths. I literally was going to say that wherever you are, you can do this wherever you are. No one's going to know what you're doing and how helpful to center and ground. And right, uh, no one notices. No one's going to say your lips are pierced, you know, (laughs) and and it just brings you back to the present time. It brings you back to center. And Mm. then you can, instead of blowing up, you can just from that centered place, express Mm. your opinion. So, so it's great for those protecting those dendritic spines. Oh my goodness. That is just so amazing. And I'm already like, you know, as you're talking about, I'm you know, connecting the dots about the contraction of the neurons and the communication and the lack thereof, and, and then bring, building these bridges and that we can continue to build these bridges on a moment to moment, day to day basis. This is not something that's like out of reach. It's like right here. Yeah. You know, I was reading this article about some drug that they were introducing to, you know, in, increase the um, communication of the brain cells. And it's like, you know, they spent hundreds of millions of dollars trying to develop these drugs. And then it ends up working in like 1% of the people. But we have all of these things. Well, you want more? I was just going to say, okay, we got the meditation. That's exciting. Um, And then we have this breath, this straw breath that you could do anywhere. What else is at our fingertips or in easy access for us on a regular basis? Diet. So in water, by the way. As as I'm like, gunk, gunk, gunk. (laughs) 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Because your your body is 60% water and your brain needs to be hydrated for it to work effectively. Yeah. So rule of thumb with water is half your body weight in ounces a day minimum. If yep. you're going to exercise more, you need more. If you live in the desert, you need more dry climate, but minimum for everybody. If you weigh 140 pounds, 70 ounces of pure, clean, filtered spring, whatever water. Okay. Another thing about diet, if you can only do one thing, I mean, I could talk about diet from, you know, for hours, but if you're only going to do one thing for your diet, for better health, I would say to stop eating white refined sugar. It is the worst offender when it comes to brain inflammation yeah. and also aging your skin. I haven't had white sugar in years. And I have to tell you, when I went off white sugar, the bags under my eyes disappeared. The the kind of, I, I can't explain it. It wasn't wrinkles, but my skin didn't look healthy. Yeah. Just getting rid of, rid of white refined sugar. And it is the main cause of brain and body atrophying or aging too fast. White refined sugar and foods that act the same in your system, like refined carbs, white bread, white pasta, they cause inflammation. Yeah. Inflammation slows down the communication between brain cells and 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 Huge. it's what causes you to feel foggy and dull. And brain inflammation is serious because again, eventually neurons are gonna start dying off. So yeah. it does play a significant role in Alzheimer's and dementia and other degenerative diseases in the body inflammation you've heard it over and over cardiovascular disease diabetes the arthritis biggest thing that people are talking about now is the inflammation and all the causes and and how it's affecting everything so diet and anything that's white so okay you're mentioning the the sugar it, it's not rocket science here you know it's like like we're, <laughs> we're told all the time sugar isn't good white flour isn't good and so perhaps you might want to mention some alternatives. Like I'm curious, what do you think yes. about gluten-free breads that yes. maybe, you know, go ahead. I will totally tell you about that. And by the way, I just want to stick this in. And that is please, please. what's really sad is that we give our kids lucky charms for breakfast. It makes me want to cry. Then, you know, Skittles with their lunch, maybe a can of Coke. And then we expect our kids' brain cells to be functioning. They can't because their brain cells also retract in, yeah. in the in, and also get inflamed in the presence of these horrible. You know, so here's the thing. My kids never hit sugar. I mean, they absolutely did not have sugar until they, you know, went out on their own. They went to birthday parties. I always um, sweetened their birthday cakes, even with like mashed bananas or applesauce. Their friends didn't know the difference. They gobbled it up. They thought it was from Costco. Probably even better. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And but there are wonderful sugar substitutes, organic stevia, monk fruit, but make sure it doesn't have erythritol. People are, oh, erythritol is so great. Anything that ends in a tall, maltitol, erythritol, sorbitol, they're all um, sugar alcohols. And even though they're non caloric because they pass through the system. Uh, the reason why you get, excuse me to be so graphic, why you get horrible gas from that is because the body doesn't know how to digest it or, or how to handle it. Right. And they're, they're not good for you. Um, coconut palm sugar, date sugar. I mean, even, even as a last resort, resort, raw, organic, unprocessed cane sugar does not cause inflammation in the same way that white refined sugar does, but don't be fooled by brown sugar, sugar in the raw. All that is, is sugar with yeah. white processed sugar with a little bit of molasses left in. So yeah. it looks brown and it fools you. So you can enjoy all kinds of delicious cakes yeah. and, and, but okay. So now you do one really important thing. Do not swap white refined sugar for artificial sweeteners like aspartame or oh sucralose. And yeah. I think it's called Splend. It's advertised as natural. That's a complete lie. They yeah. are actually even worse at causing brain inflammation. And they've been yeah. linked from everything to memory loss, infertility, migraine headaches. Uh, there's a movie, it was made in the 80s called Sweet Misery, but you could get it for free on YouTube that, that gives you a little taste, taste of what goes on when you eat those uh, artificial sweeteners. 
but um, you asked about gluten. Let's Actually, talk- before we go to the gluten, I just want to just underline that this isn't about deprivation. This isn't about you could never have something sweet. In fact, when you shift, it could be a little challenging. I've done it. I used to be very heavy. We didn't go there, but I used to be really heavy. I eat beautifully. I eat yummy. I don't feel deprived. And I have sweet. I'm just not eating the boxes of cookies or the refined crap I used to do. I do it differently now. And I love my food. It's not about missing out. It's about really enjoying and not having a consequence where you feel like shit for days because you just had something that your body's going, what the, you know? So I just want to just say this is about lifestyle changes that support so many aspects and not where you're like, oh, I can't have birthday cake. You certainly can. You just might need to make it a little differently and you will enjoy it and love it. And and I'll tell you something, my little godson, whose parent, whose mom definitely does not cook with Stevia, let me tell you, (laughs) he, he likes my birthday cake better than he likes his mom's birthday cake. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. There's something to be said about whole foods, real foods, and foods that aren't going to give you belly aches after and make you feel all puffy and stuff. Right. So, yeah, like, yeah. He wanted to take it home. He says, Mama Deborah, can I take some of my cake home? for? Because I had this little birthday party. He called me Mama Deborah, And I, I said, yeah, maybe I you can it. take the whole thing home. Oh. <laughs> you know? That's so, so great. Yeah. And, and again, my kids' friends never knew the difference. And what's so crazy now is that it's so easy to be sugar-free. When oh, I yeah. went off of sugar decades ago, it, you couldn't go into a Whole Foods yeah. and, and have aisles and aisles. There's a company called Chalk Zero. I think there, you can buy it online. I think they have white chocolate and peanut butter cups and, and bars that taste like Snickers sweetened with monk fruit. All right. I just wrote that one down. <laughs> yeah. Chalk Zero. They have, they have- Love it incredible they just came out with like these lemon white lemon anyway chalk zero beautiful yeah gluten-free yes yes absolutely gluten-free yeah so here's the thing about gluten not everybody is gluten intolerant but if you do have digestive problems elimination problems you know your your gut your biome is is just like screwed up Okay, or maybe you have um, skin problems, or maybe you get chronic headaches. Try going off of gluten and see. Uh, I have a friend who I've been friends with since we were seven years old who had chronic migraine headaches, tried every type of drug you can possibly imagine. I suggested to her maybe it was a gluten. She never had a migraine again. True, as I sit here, I get it. I get it. Yeah. So the thing about gluten, uh, gluten free, you know, it's a little bit hard to find bread, which you can, which is crazy. That's gluten free and sugar free. But if you look really hard, you can find it in in the uh, health food store. But um, again, if people have symptoms of, um, you know, a lot of gas or a lot or fatigue, you know, just really deep fatigue. Try going off of gluten. Again, it's easy yeah. to be gluten-free these days. Exactly. See what happens. It might change your life. And to listen to your body and see how it feels after. I mean, I'll, you know, I, a couple of days ago, just this just happened where I was like, you know, when was the last time I had pizza? And so I ordered a gluten-free pizza. I woke up in the middle of the night with the worst stomach ache. I mean, and I was in the bathroom. I will spare you the details. And I'm like, what the fuck was in that crust? I mean, seriously, it was like, you know, the stuff on top of it was all healthy. What was in the crust? I was so sick. So again, picking and choosing consciously, all that stuff. So much you're sharing with us. So much you're sharing with us. So what else do we need to know to look like you, feel like you and have a life that makes us go, wow, okay, I've got it going on. Well, two more really important categories. One is exercise. Yeah. You know, everyone knows you have to move your body if you want to keep it vital. But if you are exercising because you want to slow and reverse aging, there are particular types of exercise that are better than others. In fact, there's so now, talking right? about. Yeah. There is research that has concluded that there are two exercise modalities that can slow the aging process better than any others. And you know, by the way, by exercising and getting the blood blood flowing, it's good for the brain. It's good for the complexion. It's good. I don't have to, you know, say that because everybody knows that. But you might be surprised to hear what the two modes of exercise are. 
One is because people guess yoga and I'm like, no, but yoga is good. You know, you want to keep the muscles stretched and yeah, it's very good. And I, I do it, but one is aerobics turns back the hands of time. Anything thing that increases your heartbeat and breath rate, running, cycling, speed walking, not strolling, speed walking. And the other, believe it or not, is HIT, high intensity interval training. Yep. Which, for those of you who don't know what it is, it's very high intensity bursts of cardio followed by equal or longer periods of just slow. Like, for example, 30 minutes of, you know, really intense speed walking followed by a minute of strolling or slow jogging. There was a study done in the um, European Heart Journal and researchers examined the effects of different types of exercise over a six month period with hundreds of participants. And the participants were told to perform, you know, several different exercise modalities. And at the end of the six months, the researchers found that HIT actually increase telomere length you know telomeres are those nucleotide sequences found at the ends of our chromosomes like little hard thing at the end of a shoelace and when they shorten that's when aging occurs and high intensity interval training and aerobic training were the only modalities found to significantly increase telomere length so it produced an anti-aging effect my cardiologist, I have this cutting edge, amazing cardiologist. And he was telling me about it because, you know, I was telling him about my stuff and what was going on. And he was so about the hit, hilt, hilt, hilt. Uh, I always forget the letters. H-I-I-T. Intensity I- interval training. Right. So get that. Yeah. Heart pumping. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And, and by the way, meditation can also greatly reduce the fraying of the telomeres. So just it in beautiful. Um, okay. So I want to ask you a question because m- maybe it's the second one, but a lot of women in, you know, second half of life are told weight training is more important than aerobic training. So, um, you know, for bone health and for, um, well, let me just throw the ball in, you know, <laughs> and you can catch oh, it. Absolutely. For, yeah. for bone strength, you also want to do strength training, but specifically about reversing aging and lengthening the telomeres. It's That's the deal. In aerobics, but absolutely yeah. you have to do strength training, weight training, resistance training, if you okay. want bones to be strong. Okay. I have two more areas I'll, I'll, I've got to tell everybody. Go that. for it. Go for it. We got it. Okay. So let's talk about sleep. Because lack of restorative sleep is epidemic in the world. In fact, 68% of Americans and similar numbers in other countries report having trouble falling asleep, staying asleep, and waking up feeling rejuvenated. But there are things that people can start doing immediately to have more rejuvenating sleep. But I'm going to give you the one that's going to blow your mind because it is an anti-aging boon and it helps you look younger and feel younger. So here's what it is. In our sleep, we produce HGH, human growth hormone, which is the anti-aging hormone. And HGH is involved in brain function, mood elevation, aerobic endurance, um, It increases skin elasticity, HGH. It stimulates fat burning. It's good for muscle tone, bone density. And I'm going to tell you a way to increase your production of HGH by fivefold. Fivefold. Bum, bum, bum. (laughs) Okay, well, first I'm going to give you a pop quiz. Uh Is it better? Just get to chat with people. Sometimes I have to like actually answer questions. All right, I'm ready. (laughs) Okay. Is it better to get seven hours of sleep between 10 and five or nine hours of sleep between midnight and nine for anti aging? The first. You're right. (laughs) I I think it would be an easy one, right? (laughs) I'm like, oh, good. I know that answer because I struggle with that. I, I'm like, oh, I got to go to bed earlier. I know it's better quality sleep because of the circadian rhythms, but I, I exactly right. Because yes. even though it's two hour lo- two hours longer, going to sleep at midnight, you miss peak HGH production because HGH is produced while we sleep. And it's tied to, as you say, circadian rhythms. See, our bodies still function like they did when we were, when there were no electric lights. 
And when it starts getting dark out, we yeah. start producing HGH. So it's at a peak at like 10 o'clock. Yeah. And then by the time midnight rolls around, it dramatically drops because that's, it's all about circadian rhythms. So it's peaking. So tie it to, okay, if you're sleeping and it's peaking, why the two work together? You mean why, why the HGH is produced? Well, during that time? I got lost. So maybe okay. it was, I was like freaking out about the pop quiz. I don't know. Maybe my telomeres just went wonky. Um, <laughs> okay. Oh shit. She's going to ask me questions. Um, so I know, I know that when we go to sleep earlier, it's better quality sleep and it's better for us for all the different reasons. You're talking about the, you know, the, the growth hormone here that peaks earlier. It peaks earlier because we're sleeping earlier. Is that? Oh yeah. Happens? HGH is only produced while we're sleeping. Thank you. That's what there I There you go. Okay. Cause I was like, well, if it's peaking, I could be watching TV too. <laughs> no, it's only produced while we sleep. Thank okay. you for that clarity because I, 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 I talk about this a lot. I don't think I ever say that. So yeah. Yeah. So it's, it, Got the it. HGH can start, you know, so we're missing we, it. We need we to are grab missing. the HGH by going to sleep. Wow. Wow. Got okay. it. We're missing the and boat. It, if we, yeah. Got it. So if you go to sleep at one o'clock in the morning, I'm sorry to say like almost minuscule amount of HGH. So you really want to go to bed and start Boom. going to bed at about All right. Time. I'm inspired. <laughs> yeah, we produce five times as much HGH between 10 and midnight. I mean, people say, well, what about daylight savings time? Wow. You know, okay. Don't Amazing. worry about it. Just yeah. go to bed at Amazing. 10 o'clock. Yeah. And um, so if you sometimes burn the midnight oil, you will be amazed at the difference the quality of sleep, you actually dream more because and the sleep is deeper. So mm -hmm. early to bed, early to rise. Beautiful. So I have one more thing that I have to tell everyone. Something about sleep? Because I want to stay on sleep for a minute unless you're going, okay. are you okay? We can right. stay on sleep. Is that okay? Because like yes. sleep is huge. Because <laughs> so many people that have gone through menopause suddenly are having a hard time sleeping. And some of them are taking, you know, they're on hormone replacement therapy or they're doing edibles or whatever, you know, or they're getting their aura ring, which I just got to kind of track my sleep and see what kind of quality of sleep I'm going to have. I'm just curious what your take is on, we've, you know, you're talking about the anti-aging or reversing aging with the hormone that, um, with the uh, human growth um, hormone. What about the woman who's struggling to sleep and the idea of even going to sleep earlier is like, oh my God, I can't sleep or, you know, or these other things to help her sleep. Is there anything else you could recommend in that? Absolutely. I will tell you some things that will magically change your sleep. Um, number one, you probably know this to turn off your screens at least a couple hours before you go to sleep yep. because the, and I'm going to talk about blue light in a second, but the um, blue light that emerges from your screen, it, it stimulates your brain and you do not, do not want brain stimulation. Before. Phones, TVs, computers, All those things. everything, you, you know, know people say, oh, amber oh, glasses. Do the amber glasses work? I'm going to talk about that in a second. Okay. All right. Good. They, <laughs> but, not, but the other thing that you could do besides turning off your screens is have your room pitch black. Mm -hmm. You absolutely cannot have, because melatonin helps you sleep and melatonin, the darker the room, the more melatonin is produced. Yeah. So if you're sleeping in a room and there's light coming in from the street lights, or, you know, you uh, will not be able to produce as much melatonin. I have blackout curtains and I wear an eye mask. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that way, uh, that is one of the key ways that you can have deeper sleep. And of course, there are teas that you could drink, chamomile tea before you go to bed, but um, black, dark room, screens off, try those two first and going to bed early. And I think that we should have the problem solved. Boom, boom, boom. Thank you. <laughs> okay. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about has to do with screens because there is something really shocking that people do every day and it causes aging of the skin and believe it or not it is 
being in front of your screen all day. All right, I'm going to start looking really scary then. <laughs> okay, well, Keep here's me. the thing. Help it is me. one of the most insidious, the blue light that emits from your computer screen is one of the most insidious causes of aging of the skin and damage to our eyes. Wow. And this is in addition to the EMFs that we are swimming in, which is a topic for another day. I'm not going to go into it because I could talk for, on that for hours. Yeah. But the light that comes off the screen of our devices is called blue light, and it's known to have long-term health effects. Even the health letter of the Harvard Medical School in July of 2020 yeah. said that blue light can affect your sleep, your immune system, and potentially cause disease, including headaches and even diabetes, cancer, heart disease, and obesity. And studies also say that continued exposure to blue light over time could lead to damaged retinal cells and eventually to vision problems like age-related macular degeneration and even blindness. Actually, doctors are saying that one of the most um, scary things about this blue light is that our kids who spend hours in front of screens um, with no protection, that when they get to be our age, that blindness is going to be one of the greatest um, health um, wow. challenges of those for those kids yeah. in blue light exposure. And, and the reason why it's a particular concern for children is because their developing eyes absorb more blue light than adults, putting them at greater risk of long-term damage. So it could be a huge health crisis uh, for these kids. But some of the other potential diseases associated with blue light, as I said, are headaches and also suppression of our body's melatonin. And mm -hmm. that's why you want to turn off your screen before you go to bed. So how do you counteract the effects of blue light? First of all, you do want to wear blue light blocking glasses. Okay, I don't have them on right now, but I also have a blue light blocking screen. Mm. Um, yeah, so there are a lot of great companies. I like a company called OcuShield, A-C-U Shield, OcuShield, because they have medical grade glasses. My glasses are from OcuShield. I didn't just get them randomly on Amazon and they have medical grade screens. You just put it, it's a film. You put it over your screen wow. because kids aren't going to wear glasses. But I, I remember um, the year before last for Christmas and Hanukkah, I got, I have 17 godchildren. I got all of them blue light blocking screens <laughs> and they were like, really? Auntie Deb, this is <laughs> because I love you. <laughs> yeah, and because I love you. But you also want to put the blue light blocking screen, even even if you do wear glasses, because the blue light that emits from your computer has been shown to cause terrible damage to the skin. Wow. So, right. And believe it or not, if you don't want to get a blue light blocker screen, then you should wear sunscreen with an SPF of at least 40 if you're in front of the computer for long stretches of time. Wow. So, and I'm going to give you a few quotes. Um, Stephanie Wilson, Williams, Stephanie Williams, she's a dermatologist. She was quoted in uh, an article in Bizarre Magazine. She said, I'm not going to quote it exactly, but basically she said, we're now seeing increasing data on the long on the potential long-term harms of blue light. She said, our digital devices are swiftly being labeled the silent agers of our generation. Wow. And one of quote from Dr. Murad, Murad, who is the dermatologist, you know, he has his own skincare line. He said spending four eight-hour workdays in front of a computer exposes you to the same amount of skin damaging energy as 20 minutes lying in the strong midday sun. I mean, nobody- You're blowing my in the mind right now, blowing my mind. And I, I, know a lot of shit. <laughs> I know you do. You have a lot of guests who tell you a lot of good Yeah, news. right, right. I learn a lot from my guests. Wow. That's that's really mind-blowing. Wow. I'm so grateful that you're bringing this up for me and for everybody that's listening. Huh. And because I just want to repeat, nobody's going to lie in the sun for 20 minutes baking their face. Not we, at this point. We, we know it. better, but we don't know these things. And we don't know until we know. So now we know. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Four wow. eight hour days, as much as 20 minutes. Ah, Freaking me out. Yeah. But the good news is there's things that we can do, including get your free ebook called Ancient and Modern Secrets for Lifelong Radiance. What's the ebook? Tell us about it. And we'll put the link in the show notes. 
Yeah. So Ronnie and I, Ronnie, who is your consummate Harvard researcher, she is, she won't let me say anything that there isn't research behind you. So I can't just randomly throw something out, right? I wouldn't yeah. anyway, but she's like the science police. Um, this is a book where we have five more secrets about what you can do to slow, stop, and even reverse aging, like a little known way to ensure sexual health at every age. Um, and also how the um, uh, oral hygiene is, is tied into aging. And um, I, I, I can't Get even remember all of the things, <laughs> but all I can say is she is brilliant. The Aww. book is brilliant and oh, it's a great. quick read. And it's oh, great. That's, great. that's great. Awesome. We will make sure that everybody gets access to it. Deborah, this has been amazing. You know, it's like when I was talking with her right before, you know, the pre-party, we were like, oh, we need to go over time. There's just like way too many golden nuggets to like go briefly here. Um, we touched on a lot of things. And of course, there's so much more there. Please, for those of you that are wanting more, grab the ebook, look at her website and, and keep diving in. And what I want hopefully everyone to have taken from this is there's hope because I know I'm hopeful now. I'm feeling so excited to try some of these things and go to bed a little earlier. <laughs> anyway, this is about living our life out loud. That's why my podcast is called Midlife Love Out Loud, but it's about having an amazing life. And you just, you just gave us so many golden nuggets. Thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you so much. It was so much fun. I love your podcast. I love you. I love your audience. And I'm honored to be here. And I, I say, introduce these things. Do it slowly. Don't have to do everything at once. Right. right. Step by step. Thanks again, hon. And for you who's listening, I hope you took a lot of notes. And we will see you next week. Mwah!